guys, it's Aiden from WizKid Science, and welcome to my top seven colorful experiments. Yeah. Number seven is color changing flowers. Here's what you'll need for this experiment. Some glasses with water, some white daisies or carnations, and some food coloring. First, put five drops of food coloring into each glass of water. Next, put one flower into each glass and we'll see what happens tomorrow. Here are my flowers after 18 hours. The blue one started changing color first. The green one, however, has just started. I'm gonna check back later tonight to see how they're doing. Here are my flowers after two days. As you can see, the blue really turned color, and so did the yellow. The green, however, hardly turned color at all, and the red looks pink. This experiment works because as the flower drinks the water, it goes up the stem and deposits the food coloring in the petals. Number six is elephant toothpaste. Here's what you'll need for this experiment. A plastic bottle, some warm water, some hydrogen peroxide, some food coloring, some yeast, some dish soap, and some safety goggles. First, ask your parents to pour you a cup of 3% hydrogen peroxide into your bottle. Or, if you have 6% hydrogen peroxide, only pour half a cup. Next, add eight drops of food coloring into your bottle. Now, add about a tablespoon of liquid dish soap to your bottle, then gently swish it around. Now, set your bottle aside and we're going to prepare a yeast mixture. For the yeast mixture, you're going to add one packet of yeast to your three tablespoons of warm water. Then, stir until your yeast dissolves. I've gone ahead and prepared two more bottles and two more yeast mixtures, and it's time to see the reaction. The foam is just water, dish soap, and oxygen, so it's free to touch. This experiment is called elephant toothpaste because it looks like toothpaste coming out of a tube. Number five is chromatography. Here's what you'll need. Some water, a coffee filter, some popsicle sticks, some markers, 
some food coloring or other ink, a pair of scissors, and some clear glasses. First, cut your coffee filter into strips like these. filter onto a popsicle stick. Since chromatography is the separation of mixtures, today we're going to see the separation of colors. Make a line on your coffee filter a little ways up from the bottom. Hang your coffee filter over your glass or small dish. We only need the bottom of the filters touching the water, so we have to measure how much water we need to put in. It's better to have not enough water than more water because we can always add more. Now add water up to your line. Put your filters in your water and watch the colors separate. you'll need some q-tips, a clear dish, some dish soap, some whole milk, and some food coloring. What you're going to do first is take your milk and pour it into your clear dish. Then take some food coloring and put about two drops of each color. Then take a Q-tip and dip one end into the dish soap then dip it into your milk. tower. Here's what you'll need. A spoon, a glass, some vegetable oil, some dish soap, some syrup, some water, 
some food coloring, some milk, and some rubbing alcohol. First, pour a small amount of syrup into the bottom of your glass. Next, pour your milk on top of the syrup. Next, pour a small amount of dish soap on top of your milk. Then, add two to three drops of blue food coloring to your water. Then, stir. Then take a spoon and scoop up a little bit of blue water, then take a funnel and slowly pour it against the side. I'm using a funnel, but you could use the back of a spoon. The next thing we're going to add is vegetable oil. Again, slowly pour it into the glass. For our last layer, add two to three drops of red food coloring into the rubbing alcohol. And again, stir. Again, Take your funnel and put it against the side of your glass and carefully pour it into your glass. And there you have a six layer density tower. This tower is possible because each layer is less dense than the one below it. Try your own density tower at home. Number two is a salt water density tower. I'm going to make some colored water by filling these glasses with warm water and adding food coloring to them. Now I'm going to add food coloring to the water. I have to add quite a few drops to make the colors vibrant. Now I'm going to add some salt to change the densities of the water. In the first cup, I'm not going to add any salt. In the second cup, I'm going to add one and a half tablespoons. The next cup, I'm going to add three tablespoons. And in the last cup, I'm going to add four and a half tablespoons. I'm going to stir to dissolve as much salt as I can, and we've used warm water to make this process easier. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to layer these colors in the test tube using a dropper. If you don't have a test tube, you can use a skinny glass. Or if you don't have a dropper, you can use a syringe. I'm going to start with the blue because it is the most dense. When I put in the green, I'm going to put it in very slowly.
Mission complete. Here's my salt water density tower. You can also do this experiment with sugar instead of salt. Try experimenting with this at home. It took me a few tries to figure out how much salt to put in each cup. Number Fair. one is walking water. Here's what you'll need for this experiment. Some food coloring, some water, some paper towels, and some small clear glasses. First, fill every other glass with water. Your outside two glasses don't need as much water as the inside two. Next, we're going to put some food coloring in the water. You can do different color combinations than I have. Now, you're going to take your paper towel and fold it in half. Then, you're going to fold it in half again. Then, fold it in half again. Now, cut a little bit off the bottom, just so it'll touch the bottom of the glass. Now, your final step is to take the paper towel and put it in each glass so it connects all of them. The paper towel will absorb the water and create new colors in the empty glasses. Let's check back in a few hours to see how they're doing. Here are my cups after two hours. As you can see, the yellow and the red have walked over into this cup and made orange. The blue and yellow have walked over into this cup and made green. And the blue and red have walked over to this cup and made purple. You don't have to use seven cups like I did. You can just use three and just do colors like blue and yellow, and it makes green. Thank you for watching my top seven colorful experiments. Click here to watch my last video. To make your tornado, tornado in a jar. It on. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out my new channels, WizKid Math and, and WizKid Play. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, WizKid Science. A real tornado is a violent, rotating column of air extending from a thunderstorm to the ground. The most violent tornadoes are capable of tremendous